Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is ascended. And Christ has sent God, the Holy Spirit, into our hearts to believe the eternal words of God. The day of Pentecost is really the birthday of the one holy Christian and apostolic church. Jesus promised his disciples to send God the Holy Spirit who proceeded from the Father so that the disciples and all who will believe in Jesus Christ would be led into the way of truth. Therefore, we continue to pray, come Holy Spirit, to illumine our hearts and our minds to believe everything that our Lord Jesus Christ accomplished for us and our salvation in his life his death, his burial, his glorious resurrection, and ascension. Pentecost means 50, and hence it is 50 days after the glorious resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and only 10 days after the ascension, which takes place 40 days after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The liturgical color is red, and red communicates power and fire from the Lord and giver of life, the one who reveals himself as the promised one sent by Jesus the Son and God the Father. Pentecost marks the conclusion of the festival season of the church year, with the exception of next Sunday where we commemorate God the Holy Trinity. The festival season of the church year begins in Advent, and it teaches us about Christ and all that he has done and accomplished for us in his life, his incarnation, his death, his burial, his resurrection and ascension, and by sending God the Holy Spirit today on Pentecost. The non-festival season of the church year teaches us how we grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hence, the liturgical color for the season of Pentecost is green. Green is the color of growth. And as we enter into this growing season of the church year, we anticipate new health orders to be announced by the end of this week. Although we do not know what these orders will be, we will certainly let you know what our plan will be here at Zion Lutheran Church in Plymouth. The earliest possible date for an in-person service could possibly be on June the 6th. But again, we will let you know what our plans will be. I will be in communication with the chairman and the head elder, and we will have a plan and a contingency plan. The Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you on this festival day. Let us pray. Blessed art thou, O Christ, our God, who has shown forth the fishermen as supremely wise by sending down upon them the Holy Spirit, and through them you draw the world into your net. O befriender of man, glory to thee, glory to thee. Amen. The service begins with the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, O God of my salvation, and my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You will not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then will you delight in right sacrifices and burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Amen. The hymn of praise is hymn 940, Holy God, we praise thy name, 940.
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is from Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley. And behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The appointed psalm for today is Psalm 139 and the antiphon being verse 17, Psalm 139. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. 
The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. For you form my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there were none of them. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! The second reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were astonished and amazed, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in that last day it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th and 16th chapters. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. 
I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. Now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess the mystery of our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing the hymn of the day, hymn number 498, Come, Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed, 498.
Faith, hope, and joy fill your hearts and your believing. Amen. For the last four weeks, including this week, the appointed gospel from St. John has been drawn from Jesus' final conversation with his disciples before his arrest, trial, passion, his crucifixion, his death, his burial, and his glorious resurrection from the dead. In chapters 14 to 16, Jesus hints at the sending of God the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. In the Gospel lesson today, Jesus says, But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. On the one hand, God the Holy Spirit will bear witness to Jesus Christ, his word and teaching. And on the other hand, God the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. These are not separate works of God the Holy Spirit, but they're one and the same. First, Jesus teaches us that the work of God the Holy Spirit is to bear witness about him. In other words, God the Holy Spirit is to draw us to the Lord Jesus Christ and where he promises to be found, namely in his word and in the sacraments of God. Just as your headlights on your vehicle illumine the road and lanes on the highway at night, likewise, God the Holy Spirit illumines your heart and your mind to hear, to see, and know the place where Jesus promises to be found in his divine word and the sacred sacraments. This is where he promises to be found so that you don't go looking for him in a place where he does not promise to be found. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ is found in the word and the sacraments, and God the Holy Spirit will take that word and those sacraments and declare Jesus to you. He will give you faith to believe in all that Jesus has done and accomplished for you and your salvation in his death on the cross for our sins and his glorious resurrection from the dead for our eternal life. God the Holy Spirit draws you to the sacred sacraments of God, the gospel means of salvation, that apply faith and forgiveness of sins that Jesus earned and accomplished on the cross for you and all people. In the sacraments of holy baptism, holy absolution, and holy communion, Jesus is sacramentally present. He unites his divine word with a visible element to give you himself to give you his life, to give you his eternal gifts for eternal salvation. And therefore, the word of God and the sacraments of God are not only the means by which we receive the benefits of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection from the dead for eternal life, but it is also how God the Holy Spirit applies Jesus' forgiveness, life, and salvation to our lives. So in summary, the work of God the Holy Spirit is to use the word of God the sacraments of God, to bear witness about Jesus, to draw you to Jesus, to illumine your heart and your mind toward our Savior, Jesus Christ. In this way, God the Holy Spirit bears witness to Jesus, who died our death on the cross for sin, who rose again from the dead to conquer sin, death, the devil, the hell, and the grave so that we might be saved from eternal damnation for everlasting life. At the same time, God the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Through the illumination of God the Holy Spirit, the world will be convicted, first of all, of sin, of rebellion against God and his word. Although God the Holy Spirit will use the people of God to declare the word of God in its fullness and truth, there are some and perhaps many today in our own time that willingly resist God the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. I am certain you know family members, friends, neighbors, and co-workers in our own day and time who do not believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, let alone his power to forgive their sin and resurrect their body by his resurrection from the dead. 
Secondly, the world will be convicted of righteousness because the righteousness of Christ's life, death, burial, and resurrection and ascension is to be received by the righteousness of faith and with thanksgiving. And thirdly, the world will be convicted of judgment because the ruler of this world, Satan, the old evil foe, is judged already by the death and resurrection of Jesus. And all who resist God the Holy Spirit and the eternal word of God will receive, Lord have mercy, the same judgment as Satan, the old evil foe. In our time and in our culture, it is so easy to be drawn away in unbelief by the lies of the world, the deception of the devil, and to follow our own sinful passions and desires of the flesh especially during this lockdown, this third lockdown. As I pondered the eternal words of Christ this week, I thought long and hard about what Jesus said in John 16, verse 6. Jesus says, But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Sorrow has filled your heart. The Greek word for sorrow is lupe, which can mean sorrow, but it means even more than that. Here, the Greek word sorrow implies extreme grief, leading to despondency or despair, which, according to the Church Fathers, is one of our sinful passions of the flesh. And St. John Chrysostom teaches, great is the tyranny of despondency. Now, despondency can also mean a number of things, but suffice it to say, despondency can bring a sense of utter loss, of utter hopelessness and despair, being completely and totally dejected, disheartened, with absolutely no motivation or hope to continue on in the journey. Now, I don't know about you, but I can tell you that I have felt that way before. And this feeling of hopelessness and despondency in the midst of this COVID-19 situation is getting a little too close for my comfort. Some 20 years ago, when I began to study for the Office of the Pastoral Ministry, I thought very little of how the world and our culture would have an influence on baptized, believing, communing, Christians. But soon after I was ordained into the office of the ministry, I began to notice that this culture and this worldview of the world had a growing influence on Christians. It was a growing concern, and I could see it developing over time. What really opened my eyes to the world's influence on Christians was actually a little booklet that Mary Lee and I read some 20 years ago, before we became parents and had our oldest son baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This is a booklet that I give to all expecting parents, especially for their first child. And in this little booklet that I give to parents who desire to have their children baptized, under the section called The World Your Child Will Face, page 10, the author asks the following question. What kind of world will your children see as they grow into adolescence? What kind of world will your children see as they grow into adolescence? 20 years ago, as a young parent, I would have answered that question completely and totally different in the way in which I, or a new young parent, would answer that same question today. There is no getting around it. The world has changed. And the worldview of Christians has changed. I have seen it and witnessed it. But the good news and the comforting news is that the Word of God does not change. God does not change. The prophet Isaiah says that the word of God stands forever. 
I have said this several times in the past, but it is worth repeating. Being a baptized, believing, communing Christian in today's world is going to be extremely difficult. Living as a faithful Christian husband, a faithful Christian wife, in a conjugal union till death do you part is going to bring you suffering and pain. Raising your children in a secular anti-Christian world is going to be even more difficult. I have seen this with my own eyes. I have witnessed the challenges that arise from year to year. And in the midst of a world that resists God, the Holy Spirit, and the Word of God, all Christians, young and old, will be challenged, questioned, mocked, ridiculed, or belittled because of who they represent, because of their confession of Jesus Christ, because they are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Everyone who is crucified together with Jesus Christ bears his marks, and they will sadly experience tribulation in this world in one way or another. Unless, of course, we hide our identity. It's not a matter of if tribulation will happen. It is only a matter of when and where. As you make Christ known in your daily calling in life, as a Christian husband, a Christian wife, at your place of work, on your farm, as you enter into a store, as you go to the gas bar, as you go to school, as you interact with family members, friends, and neighbors, you will, as a baptized, believing, communing Christian who confesses Christ, will encounter opposition. It's inevitable because God the Holy Spirit has convicted this world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. When the devil uses the world to persecute believers in Jesus Christ, or when you feel as if God is absent or has abandoned you completely, our Lord Jesus calls you in the midst of that to fight the good fight of faith, to fight against despondency and hopelessness so that you can take great comfort and hope in the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, who draws you back to the place where Jesus, the eternal God, promises to be found, namely in his holy word and in his sacred sacraments. I know that the Church of Jesus Christ has challenging times ahead of her. There is no question about that. However, I pray that you do not resist God the Holy Spirit, but confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead for you. In the midst of your trials and tribulations, your suffering and persecution, I pray that God the Holy Spirit sustain you in the faith to life everlasting. I pray that God the Holy Spirit convict you of your own sin and rebellion so that you can turn your heart and mind in repentance toward the eternal God to receive the forgiveness of sins that Jesus earned on the cross for you, to receive that forgiveness in an ongoing perpetual way in the word of God and the sacraments of God. Through these gospel means of salvation, God the Holy Spirit will take what is Christ's and he will declare it to you. So when you do fall into temptation, when you buy the lies of the devil and the world, and you suffer for your confession of faith in Jesus Christ, and feel completely and totally helpless and despondent, abandoned, remember that God the Holy Spirit was given to you as a gift in your baptism into Jesus. And God the Holy Spirit will draw you back to Jesus Christ, back to his forgiveness that he earned on the cross, back to that forgiveness that's given to you in the word of God and the sacraments of God. Through the eternal word of God and receiving the very body and blood of Jesus Christ in the sacrament of the altar, you have been blessed, and you have received God's forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Therefore, do not resist God the Holy Spirit when you are feeling despondent, hopeless. Remember, through the aid of God the Holy Spirit, 
you know that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross for all your sins, that he rose again from the dead for your eternal life, so that you don't have to despair here and now in this world, in this world of trouble and tribulation and trials. But through the eternal gifts of God, we grow in the grace and knowledge of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we receive this eternal word of God and the sacraments of God, we can share this eternal word of God with others who have no hope. We share this word with others so that they have eternal hope in Jesus who has delivered us from this body of death and sin by his death and resurrection. The future may look awful dim for Christians and the church. However, we are constantly reminded that Christ promises that the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church, that he is going to be with us always to the close of the age. The church is God's creation, and she is here to stay, whether we like it or not so we can go to sleep at night because God promises to be with us always that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Now at the same time, when the church of Jesus Christ suffers, when she's challenged or persecuted in any kind of way, it seems as if the Lord and giver of life is renewing her strength and her resolve to grow because it forces the members of the body of Christ to consider the eternal things of God according to his word. It draws them closer in communion with him in prayer, especially when times are difficult. Someone once said, many years ago, I read or heard, that the church is like a nail. The harder you hit the nail on the head, the further you drive it into the wood. And that's what the church is like. The more suffering and tribulation that comes upon the church, it seems to spread the church throughout the world. Just consider how the church of Christ grew at the time of the apostles in the book of Acts. The more the church suffered, the more the church grew and spread to the whole world. So in the midst of our present suffering, our sin, our doubt, despondency, tribulation, and trials, we can take great refuge and comfort in God the Holy Spirit, who draws us to the immeasurable mercy of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lived for us, who died for us, who rose again from the dead for us, who ascended into heaven for us, so that where he is, there you may be also. God the Holy Spirit takes the life, forgiveness, and salvation of Jesus Christ earned and achieved on the cross, and he gives it to you. Treasured friends in Jesus, embrace God the Holy Spirit that was given to you in holy baptism. Always confess the faith of Jesus Christ and receive in an ongoing way the eternal gifts of salvation in the word of God and the sacred sacraments of God, the very place where Jesus promises to be, the place where God the Holy Spirit brings us to. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom be glory forever and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. We sing the Offertory Canticle, 781, We Give Thee But Thine Own, 781.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray. Eternal God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we confess you to be the only true God. Accept our thanks today for the Spirit's work in our own lives. Help us daily to rely upon the Spirit's importance, his work of teaching, rebuking, reminding, and comforting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, bless the work of proclaiming your one saving message into many languages. Guide those individuals and organizations who endeavor to translate your holy word into foreign languages. By their efforts, bring more people to the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we acknowledge you to be God and Lord. Renew and strengthen this confession of your holy people as the gospel is preached in its fullness and truth and the sacraments are administered according to our Lord's command and word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of the Church, by your Holy Spirit, you pour forth your charity and love into our hearts. Renew your faithful people by your mercy. Sustain them in their hope and faith, and work in them a zeal to demonstrate your mercy to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Comforter of priceless worth, send peace and unity not only to the nations on earth, but to the one holy Christian and apostolic church, to Lutheran Church Canada. Give your servants a spirit of Christian love as they seek to conduct the affairs of our church in all humility and godliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful Father in heaven, on this Victoria Day weekend, let us remember those who have served our country, and we give thanks for their service and sacrifice. We now pray that you would guide all who have authority over us, especially our Queen and Prime Minister, the Parliament, the Premier of Manitoba, all our MLAs, our local elected officials, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws, especially during this COVID-19 situation. We humbly pray that these, your servants, will fulfill their civic duties recognizing that they are your instruments in caring for us in this life by promoting stability, tranquility in our communities and abroad. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, you bless the earth and you make it fruitful, bringing forth in abundance whatever is needed for the support of our bodies and lives. Prosper the work of all farmers and all who labor to bring food to our tables. Grant them seasonable weather that they may gather in the fruits of the earth in abundance and proclaim your goodness with thanksgiving. At the same time, we acknowledge that without your care and preservation, all things will wither away and die. Therefore, open the windows of heaven, O Lord, and send an abundance of rain upon us to revive and renew the land. Graciously hear our prayer that we may praise and glorify your name forever and ever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, the consolation of the sorrowful and the strength of the weak May the prayers of those who are in any kind of tribulation or distress graciously come before you, especially all who we name silently in our hearts at this moment. We pray that they may rejoice in your manifold help and comfort. Graciously abide with those who mourn the loss of loved ones, 
Wrap them in your certain promise of a joyful reunion in heaven for all those who have died in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend for all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We sing our final hymn, 496, Holy Spirit, Light Divine. 400. And ninety six. You can find and follow Zion Lutheran Church Plumas on Facebook under Zion Lutheran or on our open Facebook page called Zion's Sermons. Please like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.